All right. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, today and this entire month, we are assembled uh, to a large degree here to, to celebrate uh, 50 years of groundbreaking ideas and uh, of uh, having actually uh, programs and, and, and software systems uh, verified. And we see here two of the main uh, proponents of that idea originally. Now this talk uh, brings this idea together with another uh, uh, set of ideas that is also about 50 years old, and that's the C language. You see here, Cunningham and, and Ritchie. Uh, and of course, the challenge is to bring these two uh, visions uh, together. Uh, and lots of people have worked uh, at that uh, over the years. Um, and so the idea of VST is to, to push that, that forward, like, like many other projects in, in the area. And the motivation is that uh, while C is uh, quite complex uh, and difficult to verify, it is still used uh, in all kinds of software that we rely on uh, every day. So it's worth doing that, even though more modern languages um, are, are emerging that are also easier for verification uh, potentially and may over time uh, take over the actual systems programming world, but it, that'll still be uh, some, some, um, some time uh, in the uh, future. I have sort of a random question. Who are the people in the, the photographs? I, I recognize Tony, but who are the others? Okay, uh, that's Floyd uh, on the left-hand side, um, and uh, Brian Koenigan and Dennis Ritchie on the C side. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, so, let me just move one from my window. So what is, what is BST? And, uh, um, it is an expressive uh, variant of, of all logic, the separation logic, as all of you know, um, for the C language um, as interpreted by uh, ComCert, in particular the ComCert uh, C light operational semantics uh, implemented like ComCert in the pr Cog proof assistant uh, so that we can uh, semi-automatically um, verify um, C programs as passed by the ComCert front end uh, with respect to expressive functional correctness specifications in separation logic. Um, and as Andrew alluded to um, already, we want to uh, connect not only downwards uh, to uh, the compiler uh, and be assured that we have the same um, or at least compatible interpretation of the C uh, language as the compiler does, but also uh, use the uh, environment that the proof assistant gives us to connect uh, the code verification to model level reasoning in whatever application domain uh, your program um, happens to be about. And I'll have several, several examples uh, of that um, throughout uh, the talk that illustrate uh, that. Um, so to start with, uh, maybe 15 years ago, um, when the um, BSI initiative uh, started, um, there were you could um, essentially classify the world uh, into having uh, two kinds of um, verification approaches. One were the um, uh, target languages were industrial strength languages that are really used. Um, typically, um, these had relatively simple um, assertions, first order expressions, um, often reusing the expression language of the, of the programming language. Um, then the technology was um, mostly automated uh, VC generation, um, perhaps using um, intermediate languages that apply to several languages. Um, there was a quite high degree uh, of automation. And of course, that has even further improved over the last years. Um, there was typically SMT or SAT solving uh, in the background or other um, well, partial automation. Uh, but there was no explicit connection to a compiler um, and no foundational soundness proofs. Quite often, uh, pencil and paper proofs of smallish um, uh, calculi connected it and quite good engineering. On the other hand, there were foundational programming logics that had been explored for another 10, 15 years by then, at least, uh, but they were typically only on research languages, toy calculi. Um, they began to have more expressive um, uh, assertions, um, often embedded in, in higher order logics, such as Koch or, or Isabel. Uh, they had very rudimentary um, proof automation um, for the user, um, but they were um, beginning to be connected uh, to operational semantics that became more and more realistic with machine checked uh, soundness proofs and sometimes even completeness uh, proofs. So 
the idea then of the uh, BST project was uh, to combine this to a uh, to greater extent that had been uh, previously possible, um, to have an expressive and practical logic to apply to, to real C that has at the same time foundational um, assurance that came from the from the right hand uh, side and to do that in the context of concert so that we can can have all this this these end to end um, assurance cases um, so uh, what is the characteristics what are some characteristics and what's the tool flow of the system so as i mentioned verification happens completely inside uh, the COC proof assistant on the concert ast as parsed by the c light gen uh, front end uh, the uh, verification then proceeds uh, semi-automatically using forward symbolic um, execution um, with manual solving of remaining site conditions and depending on how complex um, your application domain is or how good uh, other automation for that domain you have that may be more or less uh, uh, um, complex to do manually um, because we're completely working inside the cock proof assistant, we typically uh, construct uh, loop invariants uh, on the fly um, uh, in the middle of the proof script. Now you can, of course, isolate it then to other parts of the development, um, but uh, you typically do that in a way that gives you access to all the kind of um, cock values that the verification has constructed uh, at that intermediate uh, point in time. Um, and that deviates from the traditional tools where you have uh, um, typically um, loop annotations uh, in, the, in the source code. An advantage here is also that if you have ver a verification of your code with respect to several specifications um, that may perhaps even uh, employ different uh, loop invariants, uh, that's quite easy to, to disentangle. So this then outlines uh, how, the, how the approach roughly works. We start on the left with your favorite C program. Um, in, in separation logic, that's always some, some middle list manipulation, uh, pending or reverse or what have you. Um, we use the front end of the, of the concert compiler uh, to get this AST program in the middle there, append.v. Uh, um, at the same time, uh, starting on the right hand side, uh, the user uh, writes a, a model uh, program, um, or maybe it's not a not always a functional program, but a relation um, that expresses what uh, a piece of code is supposed to do. Um, the, um, uh, this is then embedded in a specification file. Um, and sometimes, uh, or nowadays, we even uh, try to do the specification uh, completely syntax, in syntax independently. I'll maybe mention that more about that uh, later on. Um, but certainly the source file is then used um, in the proof here, the very append file that imports all the specification and of course imports all the um, proof automation and maybe other decision procedures um, or, or um, auxiliary level, library lemmas and so that you have uh, from the proof automation from VST, uh, which is indeed called uh, Floyd in, in recognition of the contribution uh, that Floyd made 50 years ago. Um, so what are the properties that you get roughly uh, out of that once you've do, done a, such a verification? Uh, you get safety, in particular memory safety. So all these uh, problems of uh, read after uh, freeing um, and illegal um, dangling pointers and so are eliminated. Um, undefined behavior is eliminated. Um, uncontrolled overflow uh, is taken care of. You get adherence to this uh, partial correctness. Uh, specification. We don't do uh, liveness and termination uh, at present, um, but we have a way to talk about the external interactions um, of a program um, to the outside world. Um, we can reason about concurrency, and I'll report on progress of on, on that uh, later on. Um, and because we're using separation logic, there's always a little bit of uh, confinement um, uh, that that comes just from the fact that the that uh, the specification tells you uh, what information in the pre-state can actually be uh, read um, uh, by the by the program, and all of this is with respect to concert light uh, programs. Um, so the the definitions here are all derived uh, from the operational semantics of light in 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 COC. Um, so what I'll be talking uh, in the next. Uh, 15 minutes or so about our 
some just some overview of some applications that we've looked at over the years, uh, and then mention two or three uh, recent uh, extensions, in particular to improve modularity of, of specification and reasoning um, and extensions uh, to, to concurrency. Um, so one of the first uh, major a family of projects that we looked at and that started um, about seven years ago or so in the DARPA Hackens project was to look at uh, simple cryptographic uh, primitives. So here the idea is uh, that uh, these are smallish programs, in our case taken uh, from uh, public and standard uh, libraries such as OpenSSL and its, its clones. Um, and uh, in some cases these come uh, with uh, uh, just uh, specifications of a, of a functional program that should be um, uh, computed. And that was the case for the, for the first one that, that Andrew looked at for SHA-256. Um, but for, the, for primitives that build on SHA-256, one can in principle um, then also show more. Uh, and that refers to these, these um, cryptographic properties. So cryptographers have actually a notion of why um, HMAC message authentication um, uh, works. It, 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 it is defined to, uh, there are cryptographic proofs that you can do. They have done them on paper, pencil and paper. Um, and of course, over the last 10, 10 15 years, um, proof assistant like tools or libraries and COG have emerged uh, that um, allow you to, to do um, a lot of the aspects um, of that kind of reasoning in a proof assistant too. And we were quite lucky that at the time that we looked at uh, particularly the HMAC uh, primitive, um, Adam Patcher, who was a graduate student um, at, um, at Harvard of, of Greg Narosets at the time, uh, was looking at HMAC uh, while building his tool, the Foundational Cryptography Framework. Um, so we actually could get together with him uh, and connect our proofs of C implementation correctness um, with his proof of a semantic uh, property. Um, the, um, the interface between these two systems are functional programs just in Galena in, in, in Cox functional language. Uh, we, we wrote one that was in, inspired by the Cox program and worked on, on, uh, on, on bytes. Um, he wrote one that was inspired by the crypto uh, graphic literature uh, that worked on bit streams, uh, and he didn't have the kind of um, additional machinery or, uh, that that OpenSSL and so use. So there was some uh, use, uh, some work needed to match up these uh, two uh, different uh, projects, uh, but it, it partitioned modularly quite well, and an undergraduate could do, pro do the proofs of equivalence of these functional programs. And the same student then I found that so interesting uh, that she wanted to get more into the cryptographic um, work afterwards. Uh, so she led the work uh, on extending uh, that work to the um, an application of HMAC tool called the deterministic random bit generator. Uh, so there are some properties uh, that you can prove about random number generators that she managed to, to formalize. Um, and again, we connected that with a C verification on an appropriate uh, code base. Um, uh, over the last two or three years, other people have uh, uh, continued that. Uh, so there was a paper last year uh, at CSF by people in the Netherlands and, um, uh, and Bochum. Uh, Peter Schwab is now associated also with the Max Planck Institute in, in Bochum. Um, judging from some BST pull requests, there is at least one uh, blockchain system. So Russell O'Connor is occasionally uh, contacting us. Um, he has been looking at, at BST um, and we are quite uh, pleasantly surprised to see VST mentioned recently in a job advert by AWS. And maybe that's not quite so surprising because um, Adam Patcher, um, and also Joy Dots, as we learned earlier uh, this week, are now is working for, will soon be working at AWS. So there's some, some interest in, in this area. Um, over the last uh, four or five years, one of the other projects that we had was, of course, the uh, DeepSpec um, initiative, where we collaborated uh, with people at, at Penn and Yale and, and MIT. Uh, on various system uh, components. And one of the demo vehicles there uh, was a deep spec web server. So here again, you see in the middle, um, several um, C components already for, for different um, aspects of a, of a web server, uh, sockets, uh, buffers and a string library, and then more top level ones for HTTP connections. Um, again, uh, we wanted to connect in both directions, the C program down to the operating system interface. And that is the connection um, that uh, Andrew already um, alluded to when he mentioned this 
um, connection to, uh, to, to 30 calls and this semantic bridge between VSTs, um, uh, separation logic, um, higher order um, model, um, and an interface that is more uh, appropriate um, for the for for thirty calls, and that's the paper at, at ESOP there, uh, where he and uh, William Monsky and uh, Wolf Honore from uh, Yale um, did work on on how to bridge uh, that gap. On the other hand, at the top level, um, we wanted to do model level reasoning about messages and packets uh, on the wire, uh, and there we collaborated with the folks at, at Penn. Um, so. Uh, Benjamin Pierce's group and, and Steve Stansovich, uh, who had developed these interaction trees. We embedded those uh, in VST as, as predicates um, and could then um, uh, do, do some, some simple verifications of, of these um, socket-based uh, interactions. And the echo server that we used in our first paper is quite similar to the one that uh, Bart Jacobs uh, discussed last week. Um, so it would be actually interesting to see whether he's uh, more uh, additional specification idioms could actually be transferred to our system, but we haven't done so yet. Um, so just mentioned two or three other uh, projects. So two projects were in the in the domain of, of, of memory management, uh, broadly conceived. Um, so um, together with uh, Dave Naumann, who will be speaking later on, um, Andrew Wench uh, verified a sequential uh, malloc free system uh, that uh, some of the um, subsequent projects in VST are actually sort of now connecting to, to specify uh, malloc and free. Um, it was presented at ISMM uh, two years ago. That was a sequential uh, system. So it would be quite useful and, and interesting in the future to look at more high performance or even concurrent uh, implementations um, of that. Uh, because this is really a sort of nicely isolated uh, component that, that would be nice to, 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 to keep maintained. Uh, another uh, project that was done um, by um, people not in Princeton, not at the time in Princeton, um, but closely related to a group uh, was a, a library of uh, graph manipulating C programs, um, so led by Aquinas Hober, uh, and Sheng Yi Wang, who's the first author, uh, is nowadays a postdoc in Princeton working with us. Um, so that required them to do a lot of um, uh, modeling of, of, of graph uh, reasoning, graph theory. Um, and one of the uses of this project uh, and, and the verification um, artifact nowadays is in the garbage uh, collector um, of the Sertikok project. And Sertikok is a project uh, to um, have a verified alternative uh, to the clock extraction uh, mechanism um, to, to a camel, um, but in, in the case of Sertikov, it compiles actually to C, um, so uh, there's some um, connection between Sertikov and, and VST that is um, currently also being worked on. I remark that the senior author of that second paper, Aquinas so far, is since 2022 at UCL, and since this week is actually physically in London. <laughs> He's still trying to you know, find furniture for his house. From <laughs> All right. Uh, so the uh, next uh, collection of, of projects that I've uh, put it together here uh, concern uh, communication and networking. So one of the uh, other applications already in the um, uh, Hackham's project. Uh, quite late uh, was that William Mansky, uh, who was a postdoc at the time, uh, as, uh, looked at shared memory uh, communication in a small, uh, newly developed uh, communication protocol um, designed by HRL, um, and uh, used that to, to explore this, the status of, of concurrency. Um, at that time, that was a publication in Uppsala, and quite recently, uh, and it'll be uh, presented, I guess, in two weeks or three weeks uh, time in, in Israel and Haifa at CAF uh, is a new paper that a new graduate student, uh, two graduate students of, of Andrews did over the last two years. The Joshua Cohen is the, is the main uh, person behind this effort. So that was, was to look at um, error correction uh, in a, a small piece of code um, that actually comes from an industrial partner in a new uh, DARPA project and has been uh, in use there for about uh, 20 years. Uh, and the people who implemented it at the time um, have, have moved on uh, or, or even disappeared. Um, but um, he managed to not only verify that 
uh, C program, uh, but also completely re-engineer some of the mathematical justifications uh, that uh, are behind that uh, concerning particular variants of, of Gaussian uh, elimination uh, that they implemented at the time uh, to uh, connect uh, the C verification to the to a high level uh, model of the of what happens and what should happen uh, in in MathComp uh, in the um, uh, algebraic library uh, in Cork. And he actually uh, managed to 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 find uh, one or two small uh, um, mistakes that had gone unnoticed for the last twenty years, um, and uh, also to uh, justify why a particular piece of code uh, that uh, in the code is is, is described as uh, doesn't need this this uh, section doesn't need to be taken care of uh, or this case doesn't need to be care of is actually that that comment is actually justified so that was quite quite cool and that's described in this in this paper um, over the last uh, three or four years then uh, also in a uh, collaboration that was uh, with William Mansky and he is actually leading that um, we have been working towards improving the support for uh, concurrency uh, in VST. So the starting point on the top left here is VST's um, existing uh, support uh, for um, concurrency, particular um, blocks and primitives like that uh, in concurrent separation logic based on the uh, log invariants uh, that um, Aquinas Hobor put in and uh, that were inspired by Alex Gottsman. Um, and of course, over the last uh, 10 years, uh, two new pieces of work in, in that area have emerged. And that's the, uh, of course, one Iris, uh, and then the Tada logic of, of Philippa. Uh, she was here hello. earlier. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, so the, the goal that, that William set out um, was to, to integrate uh, those uh, aspects of those two systems in VST as much as possible, since the semantic foundations between VST and IRIS uh, are not 100% compatible. That wasn't just a, a matter of sort of uh, uh, taking a module from IRIS and, 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 and integrated in VST, um, but he has now managed to define proper um, interfaces um, and, uh, and transfer a lot of those uh, techniques uh, to to VST, so you can apply uh, them now to, to C programs um, as well, particularly the iris proof modes, um, and also he's supporting these uh, expressive invariants of ghost state. Um, so uh, to those of you who don't know uh, much about the TADA, and maybe uh, Philippa can correct me, and I think um, Ralf will mention this later as well. So here the idea of these atomic triples um, is that you um, partition or the, you find the notion of uh, specifications so that pre and post conditions have sort of uh, two parts um, that, uh, which one is like uh, considered the, the, the local part um, uh, and the other one is, is called an, an invariant. And, and the idea is uh, that you identify uh, more precisely uh, what happens before the a, a linearization point when you switch uh, from the pre uh, situation to the post situation and what happens afterwards, um, uh, taking care of the fact that even before you get to the linearization point uh, under your hood, your data structure uh, may have been manipulated uh, from what you thought uh, the status was in the precondition by other threads before you actually uh, get to, uh, before it's your turn um, and you apply the, the update at the linearization point. Um, so uh, this idea of these atomic triples um, comes from Tada and is in principle uh, applicable uh, both to the concurrency primitives such as locks, uh, but of course also then to the data structure and um, operations such as push and pop at a higher level of abstraction. Um, and given that CS uh, VST had these existing um, lock invariants um, um, as specifications of uh, um, concurrency primitives. One of the tasks that William proposed that we should investigate was whether you could actually derive the, uh, a specification of top level data structure operations, and we use the binary search tree operations uh, with respect to um, atomic triple specifications, um, both from the log specifications uh, in, uh, in log invariant style, uh, Gottsman Hober, or from uh, atomic specs um, for the logs. Um, and he had a couple of um, graduate students working on that over the last uh, two years. Uh, and Sheng Yiwang, uh, who was already mentioned 
um, earlier, also has contributed quite a lot uh, to that effort and also to the merging effort of IRIS in, in VST. And there's a, a little paper uh, coming up uh, on that at ASL, uh, which is a workshop also happening in Israel in two or three weeks uh, time. And if you're interested in, in reading that, there's a paper, of course, associated with that um, as well. Another uh, line of work that we've been looking at um, over the last uh, three or four years uh, was to um, improve the modularity um, of a verification. So um, we want to, to reap the benefits that you get from separate compilation um, and from organizing your code into a separate compilation units with a small and uh, um, interfaces for specification and verification. And that so far that has um, had uh, this line of work has had three three steps. Um, one was uh, to uh, take inspiration uh, from uh, subtyping and intersection types and notions in, in type systems uh, to uh, equip VST uh, with a better notion of function specification uh, subsumption that is um, um, correct for um, adjusting uh, parameters at uh, function call uh, boundaries, uh, but has also these kinds of uh, relationships between subtyping and uh, and intersection that you expect uh, from type system, but applied here to, to VST specifications. And that was a paper together with Andrew a couple of years ago. Uh, then the second iteration uh, was what I called uh, verified software units. Uh, and here the idea was uh, to really try to have um, at the same abstraction level at, uh, as an API in, the, in a program, a header file, uh, to have the specifications mostly uh, of these exposed functions, mostly syntax independently, um, and then to back um, up such specifications uh, when you have implementations of those compilation units um, in a way um, that um, everything um, is abstracted as much as, as possible and then instantiated. Um, in an implementation dependent way, um, when you have the C code, the specification can be uh, syntax independent. And uh, then uh, one of the challenges is then to match up exactly the specifications at the exports of one compilation units with the imports of another one using uh, subsumption, um, and to justify such a composition calculus uh, with respect to uh, Compass notion of programs and a sort of a C level uh, counterpart to uh, linking. Um, that happens, uh, of course, uh, in reality at a lower abstraction level, uh, but you can apply similar pr principles um, at a C level um, and, and formulate the soundness of such a little uh, linking uh, calculus. And Andrew then improved the efficiency um, of that. So um, typically that works uh, quite nicely uh, these days. Then the Latest um, aspect uh, of this work um, that I've looked at over the recent, over the last uh, couple of years, I was to look at um, dataless um, encodings of little object systems uh, in C. So dataless means uh, that uh, none of the uh, internal data representation of an object should be exposed at the header file. Uh, instead, objects are really uh, just uh, collections of function pointers organized typically in a struct um, so that each uh, implementation of that header file even gives you a different implementation of an, of an object API. And what I wanted to, to understand then is how far one can um, push this to understand the notions of semantic subtyping uh, while also allowing uh, code sharing behind the scenes, uh, including um, um, uh, in inheritance. Uh, and what what uh, I uh, ended up doing there was to to go back to a paper uh, from 20 years ago or so by Hofmann and Pierce called positive subtyping. That is a an alternative to the traditional notion of behavioral subtyping. Um, that is a bit more uh, strict, uh, but uh, was quite uh, pleasantly surprised uh, that the principles uh, of that can actually uh, be uh, compared quite nicely to reasoning idioms. Uh, that we have in, in separation logic. So in, in, in positive subtyping, uh, here you have a subtype um, S, the lower part of the figure, and a, and a supertype T, uh, and the relationship is partitioned into two functions. One is a projection function pi from S to T, and that is uh, quite similar to abstraction functions in other uh, notions of, of subtyping. 
Um, but the, the other part is a combination function uh, rho uh, that essentially tells you how you could uh, replace a component from S that you've projected out previously using S, um, uh, you call R, uh, with the remainder of S um, to get again a state in, 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 in type uh, S called, called U here. Uh, and that corresponds quite nicely to a particular to the familiar reasoning principle uh, in separation logic to project something out uh, to a predicate of the supertype um, and uh, have uh, a means to recombine uh, using magic wand here that corresponds roughly to the application of row. What I also found useful to actually derive such entailment principles then for object representation predicates uh, was to uh, not only have abstract state in the um, abstract predicates, and that was of course pioneered by uh, Parkinson and, and Biermann 15 years ago, um, but to also model uh, behaviors at the semantic uh, level. So this results in a uh, impoverished um, object uh, model uh, in at the level of Koch. Um, and behaviors I, I describe here as, as beta. Uh, and with that, uh, one can sort of replay um, these, this kind of reasoning that comes from positive subtyping and derive entailments actually at the right level of abstraction, retaining all the representation uh, hiding. Okay, one other uh, set of uh, projects uh, or one other pro yeah. yeah. Can you go back to the previous slide? Um, so about the verified software units. Um, so you said it's sort of like linking. Does this include like sort of the mutual recursion that you can get in C linking, where you know one object file provides A but requires B, and the other one provides B but requires A? I believe if the sharing is so um I think that it's faithful to, to what happens in, in, in C. So, uh, so, so if you have states, and uh, 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 then, then, then of course you cannot always uh, do that, but, but module that, I believe that is correct. Okay, thanks. All right, so the last, last project I'd like to mention is a collaboration uh, with Dave Nowan and his uh, graduate student, Ramana Nagasamudram at, at Stevens, uh, and also with May Milano, who's a uh, postdoc in, in Berkeley, did her PhD at Cornell, and that is to look at a, uh, a, a distributed system uh, protocol uh, that um, was developed uh, over the last seven or eight years um, at Cornell in Ken Biermann's group called Derecho. Um, and here the idea is uh, to uh, exploit uh, or impose particular uh, uh, monotonicity properties uh, on the kind of uh, knowledge and, and, and facts that, that different participants in a uh, distributed system have and how they update uh, their state. So there's a kind of um, uh, core data structure called the shared state table here that is replicated at the different uh, sites. Um, here, each, each table has as many uh, rows as their participants and columns for all kinds of data they want to exchange. And the principle is uh, that uh, the participant N has exclusive right access to the uh, row um, N in the, in the column as it's replicated, it can only read from all the other uh, uh, rows. Um, and then there is a um, um, pub publish uh, or data exchange uh, mechanism where you can um, push your information to the other nodes um, at particular synchronization uh, points. And that is in reality implemented in, in RDMA, for example, for efficiency reasons. Um, uh, we're not yet uh, modeling um, these aspects. We're not even modeling um, distributedness or concurrency yet. We've so far just looked at a sequential small re-implementation of this core data structure uh, in C um, and um, looked at uh, one or two uh, small examples uh, to exactly understand what the invariants um, are and trying to do a data abstraction as much as possible. And the long-term goal is um, to link this uh, notion of monotonicity in this discipline to knowledge-based uh, reasoning uh, that, that ha happens at, at higher level of abstraction and then allows you to do uh, sort of distributed reasoning uh, about uh, knowledge in these disparate uh, protocols. 
All right, so stepping back a little bit, um, compare a little bit to, to the traditional uh, science and engineering uh, approach uh, where we have uh, the, the approach to, to build models of natural or engineered systems using various kinds of uh, mathematical uh, systems. And then we develop appropriate reasoning and analysis principles and iterate uh, to validate artifacts um, uh, of, of, of inference of interest. Um, and of course, there are lots of different tools depending on what kind of uh, systems you have or what kind of mathematical uh, theories you have about this. And this is kind of applied mathematics nowadays connected with machine learning and data analysis uh, tools uh, extensively. And that is the uh, one part of uh, science and engineering um, gives us solid systems. The PL view, I think, is not that different in, in, in a broad outline. We also build models of, in this case, perhaps more computational systems. Well, that means that we use different uh, formalisms, uh, but similarly, we develop appropriate branches of, of mathematics and then iterate both these uh, theories or our implementations of these theories uh, and also the artifacts uh, that we want to, want to design. So this I call applied mathematics and applied logics. And because the uh, theories are different, uh, a whole range of different tools has emerged. Um, we in, in Princeton, um, are of course quite uh, focused on the uh, on the tools there on the right hand side, higher order typed ones, interactive ones, but um, other tools have already been mentioned in the in the meeting as well. Um, and the added interesting challenge in the long run uh, will one of the challenges will be to connect these two worlds uh, uh, a bit better, uh, so that, that we can actually connect our code level reasoning uh, to the kind of domain specific reasoning that people do, for example, in, in MATLAB. Um, we should always be aware uh, that we're still uh, quite often dealing with uh, mathematical abstractions. So for example, our uh, program logic VST abstracts from all timing aspects and, and, and security aspects at the lower level, so, oh, spectra and meltdown and all these things. Um, issues that that come from 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 the hardware side or the physical reality um, are, are abstracted from, um, and it's 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 good to remain aware of that. Uh, but um, what Andrew also uh, pointed out in his CPP talk um, earlier this year is that it's there's really a, a quite large ecosystem nowadays existing and and developing um, of a lot of uh, libraries and tools inside Coq. Um, and also Isabel um, and other provers uh, that happen that allow you to do real uh, interesting work at the at the model level um, reasoning uh, for specific application domains, um, and we have really as an ambition to to connect um, better uh, to those over the time for selected areas, and at the same time um, improve our um, automation. Um, and, and efficiency in VST. And one of the things we probably need to look at there is to uh, how to connect better to census approaches, maybe from CN um, can be uh, interesting to, um, to connect that. Um, and other people such as Ilya Sergei's group at, um, at Singapore have already had uh, made interesting proposals in this uh, direction. Right, and with that, um, I om I'm almost at the end. Um, I would just like to mention very briefly that we're also applying the same principles uh, that we've been developing in VST over the last years now uh, to a slightly different application area, and that is that of software-defined networking, and in particular this P4 language, which has been uh, is a, a C-inspired language for doing uh, packet processing uh, and the data plane at at high speed. Um, in the end, these data plane uh, programs always need to uh, be coordinated and, and uh, communicate with control software in this SDN world uh, that um, happens at a higher level of abstraction and happens at a slower uh, pace. Um, and often these control planes uh, are written in either Python or C. Um, so uh, a long-term vision is indeed uh, to connect these two projects, to have a reasoning about the control plane uh, in, in BST, about a C program, uh, and understand how that interacts with the P4 program at the data uh, plane. And uh, for that, um, 
the P4, a semantics of P4 is essentially one of those uh, model level uh, domains because when a C program installs new rules on switches, it needs to have an understanding of how the P4 program will interpret those new forwarding rules uh, to packet processes, uh, uh, packet and network uh, packets uh, henceforth. All right, that's everything from me. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions. I have several questions. Um, some of them might have slightly long answers, but let's try. So in, in all of these, uh, so the first is kind of a social question. In all these snazzy examples, in which of these cases are people actually you know, not in your project using the C? You know, in, in production. And in, in the cases where that's happening, how important is it that this is actually tied on to the concept? How much does that matter? Um, you, you broke up for me a little bit, but I think the, the, the question is sort of how much people are using the program sort of independent of the particular environment that, that we've, we've, we've looked at here. So our programs have been quite, quite narrowly focused on um, small programs that were either sort of that, that, that we took from, from, uh, from the web, sort of OpenSSL or, or so, um, or that were provided in very specific contexts. Um, yes. Um, that is less so in some of the um, other applications. So, 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 so these. Um, but but uh, uh, let me clarify. I was, I was not asserting one way or the other. I'm curious to, to understand. You know, in, so, in so, which case so, so, code is actually being used in you know, conventional production or in some other form? Um, there are there are two users of of, of whom we know. Um, that uh, I didn't mention here. And the reason is that uh, they are not allowed to tell us what uh, they're actually working on and what they're using the ST for. So we don't know either. <laughs> it enumerates some examples. <laughs> uh, in the paper Verified Messaging System, uh, Novin at HRL built a little communication system for the internals of a research cell, you know, automated military truck. And that C program was purpose-built for this application. The uh, sponsor of the project wanted things to be verified. It still runs in that truck, which is maybe still a demonstration truck, you know, five years later rather than a uh, production one. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, second, the one did with Maritime Laboratories, the forward error correction code. That C code was written in 1997. It's been in use ever since in many DARPA-sponsored projects. In the current DARPA-sponsored project, the program manager wanted some things to be verified, so we verified that one. We verified a program that's uh, in real use. In all of these cases, and the ones I'm going to mention next, the fact that it could be compiled with CompCert is largely irrelevant. And so it's important that the verified software toolchain is proved sound with respect to a semantics quite similar to the actual C standard that GCC and Clang uh, accept, uh, and is sound actually with respect to that semantics. So in the, a place, for example, where Compsert unfortunately refines the semantics of signed integer overflow to be defined, but if your program logic is proved sound with the C semantics, it had better be with respect to one that in which signed integer overflow is undefined. Uh, BST enforces uh, that undefinedness and makes you prove that you're not overflowing. So BST is designed with a machine check proof of soundness with respect to Compsert, but to actually be also sound with respect to CC and Clang's interpretation of CELA. Right. And, and except in the case where you have a, a 
a develop a program on them. Well, let me give another example. So, uh, uh, apparently, at Sangia National Laboratories, they used DST to verify something about a spy satellite operating system, but they're not allowed to tell me about it. Okay? <laughs> and now, at Sangia National Laboratories, uh, which they are allowed to tell me about, they are beginning a project to verify their uh, linear algebra libraries, which they don't quite trust the parallel implementations of. And, you know, one would also like to trust the floating point behavior of. Um, and, you know, we verified OpenSSL's SHA and HMAC and then TLS's and, and, you know, DRVG, and you're probably using some of those things, although we verified some antique versions of the C code. So one trick to get your verified programs widely adopted is to verify something that's already widely adopted. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, the ability to verify dusty deck programs is sort of uh, and but so in, in the Sandia case, were they using console or they again compiling the Well, in the spy satellite operating system, I don't even know for sure that it is a spy satellite operating system. I have no idea that it would tell me, but I imagine it's not compiled with console. And in the linear algebra packages, uh, we're in the early days yet, but I think. I really think most of the users of VST are not actually using Comsert. So they are relying on whatever soundness properties VST might have with respect to GCC and which I think are substantial. So that's uh, it's an interesting question how one would investigate the level of sound. Uh, yeah, I actually have a theory about how one would do that. And I wrote it up as an issue report in VST saying, Maybe one should do this. Uh, but so far, it's just a theory. We might talk about that theory later. Okay. Okay, so um, that's a second question. Maybe I should let another question be interleaved. Okay, so, our last one. Uh, okay, no, you, right. can, you can. So, uh, uh, connecting out with the previous talk that Joe uh, gave, you know, what. Uh, is the level of automation, what is the level of uh, skill that the C verifier needs to have uh, uh, in, in uh, using DST? Can, can you repeat the question? The, the sound is getting worse by the minute, sorry. <laughs> when, when someone's using BST uh, to verify a C program, what, what is the level of automation they, they have? Uh, you know, um, they, they need the experts in COP. I mean, you know, kind of related to some of the motivation that uh, the CN project. Yeah. Um, so, so there, there's a the, the, there's a part that is quite good automated, uh, well automated. That is uh, the the um, symbolic execution um, that has been in the system for I don't know seven or eight years. Um, that processes sort of commands uh, step by step. And um, depending on how complex your say uh, memory load is, um, there is an entailment there to be solved, um, maybe as a side condition of the uh, fancy uh, type system uh, that, that Andrew mentioned uh, in the previous uh, talk. Um, typically those are relatively uh, easy uh, to solve as long as you know that all your pointers are actually valid pointers. Um, um, but then, of course, when you come to um, uh, loop invariants, the end of the loop, when you need to reprove the, that the invariant holds, uh, then um, that really depends on the complexity of your application domain. Um, it is still quite annoying that we're often having to deal with uh, number conversions between uh, uh, Z and NAT and, 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 and signedness uh, uh, conditions, but um, to a degree, uh, that is also uh, just an indication how much of that occurs actually in, in, in real C programs. Um, but yes, automation there uh, would be better, uh, could be improved. Um, and in other cases, it really depends on how, how well you've understood your application domain and how well you've, you've isolated reasoning principles of that as entailment lemmas or, um, or automation um, 
tactics or or Galena programs uh, beforehand. Um, so um, yes, proof scripts are still uh, quite long, um, but um, the specifications um, are um, particular when you stick to um, abstraction principles, I think of manageable uh, size. <laughs> Uh, to, to my, my second question, no, the, the, you don't have your second yeah, question. No, it's like, a generalization. Okay. Of what you're saying. Oh, right. so, <laughs> unless, <laughs> okay. yeah, very happy to go. So, to my second question, what a generalization of of Shankar. So, uh, last week, for some reason, some of us were trying to, to describe the relationship between CN and some of the related work, um, with respect to uh, the C idioms that these various tools can handle, and the C language features, and the, the realism of semantics that they support, and the user experience of, of driving. So, you know, DN, and DST, and Veripass, and you know, a bunch of others. And it seems to be really hard to do this comparison. There isn't, um, at least for us. Uh, I, I, I kind of want to, I, I want to encourage people, Mr. Amber, I want to encourage people to collect you know, a nice set of very simple examples. Um, you did that yesterday. And Andrew has done that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, Andrew <laughs> mentioned this small library um, um, uh, last year, the, the C benchmark, uh, last week, the, the C benchmark programs. Um, I don't know um, whether, how, how the other tools you mentioned um, uh, have been, whether they have been evaluated. Uh, and, and yes, it could, could probably be grown to a better one. Um, Five minutes to advertise my collection of those. Uh, please, <laughs> please. Um, and then maybe we can have another five minutes to debate it. <laughs> but almost for sure. Uh, I mean, so, so what? So uh, Thomas and Bruce boldly went forth and tried to run some examples from you know the VST micro tutorial and the very fast setup and so on. And of course, those examples are specially designed to be for those systems. So to get you know a, a collection that sort of so what you have what to have is a C mark challenge. <laughs> sort of, yes. Uh, but also I want not, I mean I don't really want you want a collection to be a place where you can make full requests, put your own favorite examples. Uh, I want much more than that. <laughs> I want for, for these simple examples, I want the authors of the tools to a gun. A model solution, not whatever we would come up with, and he just explains to me that I don't have to think too much how their tool actually is working on those examples. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, sir. I'll talk to five minutes after. Hi, Leonard, it's my turn now. So um, my chin nearly dropped to the floor when I was uh, uh, hearing about you talking about uh, the atomicity work. So thank you, it's great. And I'll follow up uh, with everybody sort of later. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question for now. So um, even specialist concurrency verification people will say, ah, why atomicity? I've managed just fine without it. And so my view of that is um, at the level of function specifications, one wants atomicity, but at the level of clients, one can prove specs that um, then gets rid of it if that's um, appropriate for the task in hand. So I just wondered if you had any thoughts about this, and in particular in the context of the sort of examples you've been looking at and maybe are thinking about for the future. Um, yeah, so so um, I think the better person to two persons to ask uh, about that is uh, are William and Shengyi Wang who've been uh, who yeah. have been doing a, a lot of that work. Um, and yes, I think we're 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 still figuring out um, 
where, where to be in that, that, that space exactly, what, what the sweet spot is. Um, I yeah. think the specifications still are quite, quite messy and, and indeed exactly yeah. how to partition the, the assertions into the local um, and, 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 and invariant uh, part is still yeah. quite tricky. Um, I'm personally still learning about the, the Irish style invariants and ghost states. Um, and maybe Lars, uh, um, Ralph can uh, shed more light on that uh, later on. Uh, but yes, I think that's still an, an open open question to us yeah. as well. Okay, thank you. And also just to um, advertise at the advanced separation logic um, meeting, I gather Ralph um, Young is talking about um, logical atomicity um, for Iris and the next steps there. In Iris, they haven't done so much on uh, atomicity, even though it's fundamental, it, embedded in what they do. They haven't explored it uh, so much. And Ralph's one person that's um, on the way to that. And also, I'm going to be talking about Tadar Live, um, which is the uh, liveness stuff, stuff on top of um, Tadar that's got published last year. So um, there's going to be a bit of an atomicity fest in this advanced separation. Yep. And I would just like to add that what William has done is not reinvent Irish style currency reasoning. It's to layer Iris's own uh, view shift style concurrency reasoning no, on top of VST. Yes. yes. So that we don't have to keep reinventing it as it evolves. Yes. yes. Okay. Can we go on, Sean? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you in an hour again. Really? Well, so, uh, uh, Munch, uh, do you always have to go to church in college this time? Uh, that's what we've been doing. Doesn't the place next door have Munch? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I would say you were 